Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this uh, classic Saturday on March the 21st. I know you folks in Mississippi are already gone gun hunting down there. You're down there doing it, and uh, as the season is already open, I can't wait for April 4th. Uh, coming up here in Tennessee, I've already got my spot set up. Uh, Going to be in the woods broadcasting the show live from the air, and I really feel like that this is the year I kill a turkey on the radio. This is it. Bill Cooksey smiling, as he always does, and everybody else. That's called the Whispering Show, you know. And, uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm going to try to get one out there that I know must be old. And maybe if I see a, if I see that turkey and it's got a hearing aid, I'm going for it. Okay, that's my chance and everything. But uh, now here you go. Don't again. worry about the whispering. Turkeys, I promise you, don't pay that much attention to your voice. Just be still. I'm going to be still. You yeah. can talk. Just I'm gonna, be still. Just I'm going to be still. Quiet. Just I, talk about it like this, and a turkey will walk right up to you. Okay. All right. Well, I know this guy next on the sto- on the on the uh, show has uh, had a few turkeys walk right up on him before because he knows how to call it too, and that's that's a good friend uh, Rick White out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, who has uh, uh, been a long time member of the Hunter Specialties Pro Staff. We've caught him in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he's doing another one of his seminars, and I don't know how many seminars he's done a year and. How many have you done in a career? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even know. I like the a old lot. gosh. Yeah, a, a whole lot. But Rick White's been on the show, folks, many times. And uh, first of all, good morning, Rick, and thank you for taking time from your schedule to be on Outdoors with Larry Ray. I know you've been a competitive caller uh, 11 times at least, the Iowa State Turkey Calling Championship, 10 times the Iowa Open. Uh, tell my listeners out there a little bit about the difference between competitive calling and meat calling. Well, you know, first of all, you you don't have to sound like these competitor callers to go out and call turkeys in. In fact, I believe a lot of these competitor callers, I mean, some of them are so good nowadays, they actually sound better than the actual turkeys themselves. (laughs) And uh, there's more of a routine. And when you get in the turkey woods, there is no routine. You hear all kinds of different sounds from from sounds that you would think were the world's worst callers that are actually turkeys, and you've got short yelps, you've got long yelps, you've got high pitch, you've got low pitch. You've got it's all over the board in the woods. Where where you know when you're in a contest, it's more mechanical and and more tuned. So there is a big difference, but you know don't don't fool yourself. Good calling can also uh, add to good success in the turkey woods. Yes, and I, I know that, and some of these guys that are with us this morning inside the studio here as we visit with Rick White uh, from Hunter Specialties, and uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, teaching kids how to do this. Rick, I know you love to teach kids, and uh, Steve Turpin is in with us from Turpin Game Calls in here, and his family's over 100 years in the in the call business, and he, he says he can teach a uh, a kid in, in five minutes, isn't that what you said, Steve? He shook his head. Yeah, well, well enough to call. Well enough to call. So let's talk about uh, uh, what is your favorite, uh, per, uh, you know, do you like old people, young people? Or who's well, easiest? I, I, I like to take anybody turkey on, but let me first say, uh, kids raised in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, camping, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, I, I believe they have a better respect for life. And I see these kids getting in trouble in school nowadays and, I'll bet they've never spent one day in the woods. So for that one reason, amongst a lot of others, we owe it to them to get them out in the woods. Yes. When you get these kids out in the woods, show them a good time. I like to hunt them in blind so that they can move around and stretch. And I like to let them take their cell phones with them or little handheld games so that they can preoccupy themselves when things are a little bit boring. And it can be boring sometimes in the turkey woods because – you know, if you bore those kids and you ask them to go out again, they're they're liable to say, "Oh, you know, that wasn't fun." So show them a good time. You know, keep them dry when it's when it's raining, keep them warm when it's cold, and and just get out and experience what Mother Nature has to offer. They'll enjoy it, and uh, it's very rewarding if you if you've ever taken a kid out and he's been successful in the turkey woods. There's not a better feeling in the world. I hope everybody gets to experience it. Well, you know, I'll be 72 in May, and I'm still a kid. You know, when I go to the turkey woods, I become a kid again. I don't know what it is. You know, when I go deer hunting or duck hunting, uh, I, I'm I'm still, you know, I'm old. But when I go turkey hunting, I feel like a kid again, you know. And I, I don't know. It, it, it's the, it's adrenaline pumper here, man. My, You know. It's the anticipation before <laughs> season that, that really gets me going. I mean, I love hunting. Every day I'm out in the woods. But 
this time of the year right now, a season right around the corner. It, it seems like that's when I'm the most excited. It's not not always just carrying that turkey out of the woods. It's it's just preparing and getting ready and talking stories with all your friends. That's what that's uh, what turkey hunting's all about. Well, Rick, we appreciate you taking time, buddy, on this Saturday morning to be with us. And I told Rick off the air I'm going to start paying him because he, we're getting him on here a lot. But uh, you got a lot of fans down here in Memphis. Uh, you got some good products out there too, don't you, Rick? Well, we do. We've got a lot of great products. We manufacture over 700 different items, but for those turkey hunters oh, out there, yeah. you know, we've got some new calls, and we've got a new line of decoys, the snoods. I got That's one. Of, yeah, I got me a snood in the mail yesterday, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, they look good. They're light. They're collapsible. And the better looking the decoy, the better they work in the woods. So, you know, get out and take a look at all that new stuff. Yeah, I know that the decoys look a lot better than the person calling up the deer, uh, the turkeys. I know that. I feel like the turkeys look a lot better than me. That's for sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you, buddy. Have a great one up there in uh, Minneapolis, and we'll talk to you again, I'm sure. Okay? All right. Good luck, everyone. All right. Thanks, Rick White. Rick White, yeah. oh, one of the nice guys uh, in the industry right there. And I did get one of the new snoods in from Hunter Specialties that uh, – in fact, they sent me a snood and a snoozy. I mean, I don't know. There's a look like there's a, <laughs> the Suzette and the snoodette. And a, well, a, all set. I am all set. I'll just put the snooze out there and, and go. Of course, I got the funky chicken and I got all the. <laughs> well, he he said collapsible, and that's my favorite thing. Uh, so is. many of these new realistic decoys don't collapse, and uh, I can't carry them. You know, you know, people that are going to a permanent setup, that's fine. But I most of the time leave a decoy at home if they don't fit in my vest well, i'm just not going to tote it around because i like to move well, well there's some of these that are i've got a couple of them too that move themselves out there you know and uh, they look real you know but, but they're hard to eat man they're tough you know that, that, that and everything hey hey let's talk about russell here russell get back on that line here okay you got keith all right all right, all right let me get keith hickman real quick on here hey keith you there I'm here, man. Okay. Man, I was uh, getting ready to – we're so wrapped up in here in turkey hunting, I don't know what I'm going through here and everything. So, <laughs> of course, Keith uh, Keith Hickman is our good friend up here from uh, Paris Landing State Park. And, uh, Keith, I know that uh, uh, that uh, you combine two of your loves, golf and turkey hunting. Tell us a little bit of how you got involved in turkey hunting. Oh, man. Uh, I don't think you got enough time today. I just – uh, the first time I went, I got hooked back in the 80s, and I've been hooked. Uh, it's been a passion of mine ever since. Uh, sometime when you get got a little bit longer show, we'll talk about how I got started. But uh, I've been almost 30 years now. 30 years, and he's combined his love for golf with turkey hunting. And I know that you've already told me, Keith, that you got some uh, yelp. You've, you, you've heard some action up there? Just a little bit. Of course, we uh, y'all may have already talked about it, but we went from winter to spring. And, <laughs> you know, I didn't do much scouting in an eight-inch snow, but uh, I did look for a few tracks. But uh, just the past week, I did hear a few birds gobble. Uh, one day, pretty good, but the rest of the time, just a few, few gobbles here and there. But the birds are still kind of with hands and packed up and ganged up, so I didn't hear a lot. Well, Keith's location at Paris, Tennessee, did get really hammered up there, and uh some of our folks have asked uh, what effect that had on the golf course, and so i got to sneak that in there a little bit. Uh, how's the course? Well, actually, it, it uh, ended up being pretty good. I mean, uh, the snow had some nitrogen in it, so, of course, we overseed our fairway. So once that snow melted, I mean, everybody's like, where'd that green grass come from? But, you know, we got airfied this past week, got them sanded, and, just a little bit of more more warm weather, and we'll be uh, we'll be in real good shape. And you have a chance when you play golf at his course, it, uh, you might see a turkey, right? Yeah, you might. Uh, we used to have more than we do. I don't know what happened to my turkeys on the course. Of course, we're an Audubon certified sanctuary, so we do a lot for the wildlife. Lots of deer, squirrels, and every you know, bald eagles and osprey. You'll see everything. But my turkeys are kind of they eat on and off the course. They just don't like a lot all that commotion, the golf carts and people cussing because they hit a bad shot, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, do they know that you're a turkey hunter, too? Does that add to it, too? Uh, that could be it. That's... I guess that could be it. What, what, uh, the what... bad thing about it was, every time when we did have a lot of birds on the course, every time I'd kill one, everybody was saying I was killing uh, one. Of the course, yeah. Yep, they kept yep. ragging me about that. Yeah, that too good. that's what they did for Keith. Well, thank you, buddy, for being with us on this quick time this morning, and we will talk more the next time. 
So, uh, and uh, I'll let you know that I still don't have a hole in one, but I'm, I'm, I'm coming up there this year. Th- maybe that your place is where I get my first one, okay? Maybe everybody, y'all come on up, man. Y'all have a safe spring. All right. Thanks to Keith Hickman. All right. All Keith, right. All right. Keith is a member of the pro staff for Primos, but uh, let me talk a little uh, with Russell here a little bit. Russell, tell our listeners, get that microphone up there, Russell, close, and tell, tell our listeners uh, what, what changed your life. I had a work uh, accident. and uh, How long ago? It's almost six years. You remember the day, don't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What happened? It was yesterday. Uh, I had a 20,000 pounds of steel, 850 degrees collapse on me. And uh, something like that, it pretty much takes whatever it wants off of you. Yes. And I uh, ended up losing both legs below the knee and uh, was rehabilitated to uh, seven months in a wheelchair until I got my legs and then... I got my legs. It was, you know, the woods were still always there calling <laughs> yeah. me. And, yes. And, uh, you know, I still do everything I used to do. It just takes me a little bit longer. But deer season comes, I still climb up in my stand. Yes. Turkey season, I may not crawl around like I used to, <laughs> but, you know, I still get out there and get after them. So. And he makes some quality calls here, too. It's uh, uh, the thing about it, I know where Russell lives now. He's pretty close <laughs> to Quail Ridge Golf Course, and I've seen him out there, but uh, – uh, we're going to talk more with Russell also about his calls because this is something that uh, he never thought you'd be doing. No. I mean, uh, this is a God-given talent yeah. that he's given you to make these slate calls, and you brought a slate call, and you bought what else did you bring over there? Uh, I just brought a diaphragm call. And a diaphragm call. And uh, it, it's a, a remarkable story of what Russell's been through and what he's done. And, and I know uh, sitting uh, between uh, – Ray Glass and uh, Steve Turpin over here is, is pretty amazing. Oh, it is. Sitting next to you, too. I didn't mean that either. Uh, Bill Cooksey's looking at me here. And also ran. Uh, oh, no, you're not an also ran or anything like that. So uh, let's take another break. Are y'all ready to make some more music here? Get ready here. And we're going to come right out of here on Outdoors Larry Ray. Talking more turkey on ESPN 7 Let's go now. <laughs> <laughs> 